even Jackson was letting the North screw the South. 2% of the South had slaves. Most of the whites that were poor were as bad off as the black slaves. I mean, that's historical. They were called sharecroppers. They were slaves for all intents and purposes. Their ancestors got here to pay for the way over. They would sign up for seven to 10 years indentured servitude. I'm gonna skip this network break so we have more time. They would, they would get over here and so they were slaves too. It doesn't take from the plight of the Africans who were definitely treated the worst on their way over here and who were treated the worst when it came to their rights. But when it came to starvation, poverty, degradation, the sharecroppers were pretty close to the bottom of the barrel as well. And so Robert E. Lee was the commandant of West Point. Uh, he was a famous general in the U.S. military. He didn't support slavery. He didn't support the South, but he supported states' rights. And so he resigned his commission and joined being a general within a year or so, became the head of the Southern forces. It's very interesting history. I've read all about it. I don't dress up in gray uniforms at home. Uh, I don't dress up in blue uniforms at home. Quite frankly, uh, I, I have an illustrious lineage in U.S. history from Texas right back to the founding of the country and before. So obviously, I'm not going to get into my Southern Civil War roots. Uh, just put it to you this way. The rednecks and people, they know about it, bow down to me, okay? But the whole point is that, that I understand that the South was snookered, the South was bamboozled, the South was set up, and the North was a victim in this thing as well. But 600 plus thousand soldiers died in the Civil War. Now, did the South fight three to one, four to one, 10 to one by the end with about 10 times the military equipment on the North? Did the South win the first two, three years against the North with some of the best military maneuvers with Stonewall Jackson uh, and others? Yes. So there's the pride of the South that they absolutely dominated the North when on average they were fighting four to one against Northern soldiers. But these were city guys from the North. They, they weren't the children of the, you know, the wagon train folks. So you talk about skin a buck, run a trot line. The North was fighting Davy Crockett. So that's why they were in deep trouble. The South ran out of shoes, ran out of guns, ran out of bullets. So there's this illustrious strength of the South and, 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 the, and the whole giant black brigades that fought uh, on the side of the South, the whole nine yards. The history you're given is not the real history that was going on. Slavery was a horrible institution that the West began the process of getting rid of. Uh, there were annals in Alabama where a lot of Texans came here because they would try to arm their slaves, basically free them, and then set up basically their own industrial uh, agrarian combines. That was going on. A lot of people in the South got kicked out to Texas because they were doing what George Washington and Thomas Jefferson had done upon their deaths, freeing their agrarian slaves. So, so it's, 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 it's a 2% had slaves. Of those that did, there was a percentage that beat people and killed them and everything else. Uh, with most other folks, it was an entirely different culture than what the media projects. No one's defending it. It's just that what you're told in the news and in the media is not what's going on. It has no reflection in reality to what happened. Then the biggest issue is that for a decade after the Civil War, Lincoln didn't want to break down the South. He didn't want to follow with Sherman's model of Reconstruction. He got shot in the back of the head by John Wilkes Booth, we're told. Really, the evidence points towards that being a setup that a lot of folks wanted to loot the South. A lot of Northern industrialists wanted to take it over. The railroads wanted to dominate it. Again, I talk about how the South got set up. British intelligence on record armed and trained a bunch of the South, gave them weapons, and then when they had the boa constrictor, or was it the Atacanda strategy, it was the big giant snake all the way around the East Coast, all the way up the Mississippi, to, to, to basically cut off supplies, the British didn't break those and didn't supply the South. I'm not demonizing the British either. These are just facts of what happened. That you watch shows like Roots or other shows, they don't teach this. They show a guy with a whip beating a black guy. And that's just not what it was. Slavery was already being phased out. It was collapsing because of industrialization and Eli Whitney's cotton gin, which was probably actually invented by a black guy. But the point is...
that, no kidding, wanted to quit having to pull the stuff out of the cotton themselves. So the reality is not what the public's been given. And, and Reconstruction, Reconstruction was absolutely hellish. My family owned a hotel on my dad's side uh, in East Texas. And when the Northern soldiers came in after the Civil War, they didn't just take it over. They just burned it to the ground and killed everybody. And it's on tombstones, the family cemetery, Killed during, you know, killed in Reconstruction, killed in Reconstruction, killed in Reconstruction. So it was a hellish occupation for a decade. And why didn't they go back to their old state flags? As CJ said during the break, the only way to spit in the eye of the North was to make the rebel flag the state flags and defy that someday we'll beat you, someday we'll get free. And in a way, the South has had its sick revenge. And that the North has become so corrupt and taken over by mafia and government, and the South has lower taxes, that all the industry and people are moving to the South. I don't have some hate the Northerner strategy. You know, I have strong roots to New York on my mother's side of the family and the heirs family that helped found the state of Texas. Uh, and, you know, raised Colonel Travis's son in the whole nine yards, David Ayers, William Ayers, you name it. They were uh, successful business owners, landowners. Uh, in New York City. In fact, uh, one of them owned the land the UN's on today, sold it, ended up being in the Rockefeller hands, uh, and that was owned by my family. And they sold everything they had to move to Texas. It was a Protestant revolution against Catholics. And they came here with boatloads of Bibles, and that basically was what ignited the revolution in Texas. And they were there at Washington on the Brazos helping put all that into place. So, and I'm not bashing Catholics either. I'm just giving you the background in this politically correct world, we're not supposed to talk about history or names or what happened or what went on. And when we look at the rebel flag today, and people think, oh, it's about going out and killing folks or it's about slavery. When this scumbag, whether he was behind it or not, the archetype of this guy's a scumbag, this, this roof, this punk, goes and kills nine innocent people in their church for no reason but to cause a race war, we shouldn't give him what he wants to pull down Civil War uh, statues. We're going to pull them down in the north. They're just historical. The pharaohs had slaves. We're going to go to Egypt and blow up, you know, images of uh, Tutankhamun? No. I mean, it's stupid. It's, are we going to blow up statues of Julius Caesar because he had slaves? That's what this is all about. But the media has branded it as hate. So the right-winger extremist and the left-wing extremist believe it now. It's, it's really a case of brainwashing how they've taken a symbol. I, I mean, Robert E. Lee was probably one of the most popular people in America. I was even reading this in like Time Life magazine that they have a Civil War issue. They admitted it in there. I'd read that, but I was surprised they admitted he was one of the most popular men in America when he died. Seen as as honorable and as incredible a general as you could be. By the North. It wasn't about slavery. Lincoln wrote letter after letter saying, if I could end this and not free one slave, I would. So that's another fraud. And it'd be great if we fought a civil war to end slavery. That sounds great, doesn't it? It isn't true. So that's the issue. The robber barons set America up with British intelligence in a pincer attack to break the whole country up. The civil war was an attack on the North and the South by the robber barons, financed by British intelligence, period. So all the Southerners are wrong, all the Northerners are wrong, history's right. And we're idiots to be played. Okay, we got four minutes to break. I want to get uh, CJ's take. You can repeat what you said earlier uh, about the situation, your view on the rebel flag. Well, you essentially stole my thunder about what happened in the South after the restoration or the um, reconstruction. reconstruction. But uh, it, it goes along with the same thing that every society has done. Hitler took the swastika that was an Indian symbol of brotherhood, turned it into a symbol of hate that'll be a symbol of hate till the end of time or we forget about it as a society. Um, in parts of Africa, the British flag meant death was coming coming because the British were tyrannical on every scale in that continent. And it's too bad. People that believe it's heritage are going to have to get over it because a couple of bad eggs or hundreds of bad eggs. Well, sure. I mean, if we get rid of the rebel flag, what's next? Well, I mean, it's now they're saying the word dad is hurtful. Now you can't have Father's Day. Now they've got ads for the S, you know, for the animals, you know, saying don't be a deadbeat dad, neuter your dog or spay. I saw it. that, bro, Lord. It's hilarious. <laughs> but 
we have schools here that say you can't wear an American flag because it's hateful. What's next? And you can attribute things that are bad to it. And I'm sure we can find some crazy person to go kill people draped in it. Yeah. Well, you just hit on it. That's a headline. What's next? Ban the American flag? I mean, the American flag has flown over more slaves than the Confederate flag. Palestinians would think the Israeli flag is a vicious symbol of hate. Yeah, and we're not saying that. We're saying from that perspective. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there is exactly, CJ, so how far does this go? Until political correctness takes a backseat to reason. Until we realize it's the true threat to all of our freedom. Yeah. The rebel flag's not a threat. The American flag's not a threat. President Obama said that just because the N-word's not used in society doesn't mean that we don't have deep-seated racism, but it's just a word. It's just a flag. It's just a symbol. It's the... Well, the truth is losers want to engage in racism, be they black or white. We know there's plenty of races that are black, Hispanic. I mean, it's just humans do that. It's tribalism. Losers get into that because they're not successful themselves and need to feel better by putting somebody down. And the truth is the Democratic Party shamelessly keeps racism alive. They're the biggest filthy pimps of it, and I'm sick of them. I'm sick of being gamed by the Klan and all their house slaves like Obama. That's it. Obama is a black man sent to convince black people to abort their babies. He's the biggest grand dragon the world's ever seen. And I mean it when I say it. He wants to murder black people. But I never was sophist that sophisticated back when I was younger. I always just tried to do a good job because... That's how I want to be treated. But thank you for loving InfoWarsLife.com products. Whether it's the Survival Shield Nason Iodine X2 or the Colloidal Silver uh, or the Super Male Vitality, Super Female Vitality, uh, the Secret 12, the w Winter Sun. All of it is the purest, strongest, most hardcore stuff that we know people are the most lacking in. I mean, you go take synthetic vitamins, they don't do anything but fill up your gallbladder and fry your kidneys. You take the real stuff. I mean, here's an example. One product, DNA Force, costs us over $50 a bottle to produce. Similar formulas that have $50 a product in them sell for $300. It's our most expensive product at $129. I mean, it's marked up one and a half times. Why can't these companies fund themselves without marking it up seven times? Point is, you want bio, CoQ10, PP, I mean, all the stuff in there, off the chart, organic, totally absorbable, the Rolls Royce of, 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 of everything for your entire body, your cells, DNA force. Right down to products that are $14.95. So we've got the highest quality products at the lowest prices out there. OccuPower. Say it's for your eyes, it's because it really helps them. It's the poor man's DNA force. It's got stuff in it almost as good for $24. And it's simply amazing. But regardless, when you purchase these products, you're funding an operation dedicated to not dumbing people down, dedicated to giving people a wider context and bringing us together through our shared experiences, every race, color, or creed. And when I called Obama the greatest grand dragon ever lived, Think about it. He could double black unemployment. He could increase worldwide abortions of black people for Africa, you name it, and be called a lover of black people. I mean, if I'd killed 14 million black people like Roe v. Wade has, would I be praised? It, it's just sick. I'm being called a racist because I'm against Obamacare. That's a giant screw job. When, when, when Obama is a eugenicist front man for people that want to kill everybody. They've just had black people under their thumb more so they could get away with it more on them. We're all in this together. <clears throat> We're not going to make it if we don't wake up. Sorry, I'm digressing. I read last hour, I've asked the crew to bring me just print off three reviews every day. There's scores of new ones. There's, I don't know how many reviews, close to 1,000 just on Survival Shield, Nation Iodine, X2. This is from Big Mac, Salt Lake City, Utah. I don't want to write a link, and this is on a third-party major review site. You can click it and see it all right there. I don't want to write a lengthy review, but I will say this product is bleeping hardcore. 
I lived every day and the stuff is boosting me to maximum.